and we're looking to start an internship program with FIU this summer. And it's going to be real estate and asset development, as well as hotel and finance. So this is perfect. So then you have all the information there, and then I've got my card. We're working with Sandra Gonzalez, who's in business partnerships. And then we're going to be working with the dean of hotel. But we want, we like FIU because you have construction, where there's a need for construction. Then you have the hotel, and then you have architecture and real estate. So it's, it's a nice mixture of all the different. Yeah, good. We do, and that's why we're looking for interns. We actually hire two analysts that do pro formas for us okay. for projects. Um, so the ownership group, I can tell you a little bit about Prime. We have copies here too. Um, so the ownership group, if you flip over the first page, it tells you a little bit about Prime Group. We're based in Hollywood, Florida, and we're a private company. The Abbo family started our company. Um, Larry Abbo is the CEO, he's my boss, and Fred Abbo is his father. They started back 25 years ago in home development. And they built home communities, and then when the market crashed, they thought, hmm, maybe we should be diversified so that we don't go down with the market. So they had a lot of land, and they started to develop, or sort of 15 minutes of the world design, but they would buy big pieces of land, sell a lot off, and keep a small portion. And then after doing that for 10 years, they thought, well, maybe we should keep it and start developing it ourselves. So their first projects were in Homestead, <coughs> near that market. Um, we own three hotels in Homestead. We started with a Hampton Inn, a courtyard, and a town place suites. So we'll take a parcel of land and they'll add a hotel, and then we added some commercial in the front, and we have an outback and a Starbucks and a couple other things in the front. So that's really how they started. They would just buy land. And Homestead, yeah. right by the hospital, um, it's really, it's like the exit before you get to the keys. Okay. I live you know, in the room, so it's Oh, good, so you might know. We also have a restaurant there, Portofino Cold Fire Pizza. Mm -hmm. okay. 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 <laughs> have you really? Good. That's good. That's good pizza. Um, so that's a little bit about our company. Um, I'm here to talk a little bit about hotel design. So I thought I'd show you actual products that we're working on. Um, so that's about Prime. Then if you look at the hotels that we have, we have 17 hotels that I oversee. As the asset director, I don't directly manage the hotels. I work with a management company. We do manage some food and beverage operations, but I work through a management team. And I always say I'm responsible for everything, but nobody reports to me. So it's more you're trying to get things done through the management company, but I, I'm looking at top line, bottom line, and our market share and then the building. Those are really the four things that I focus on. But we have a lot of different hotels. If you see here, we have Playa Largo Resort, which is in Key Largo. Um, it's a very <coughs> nice resort. We have the Daytona Hotel and Art Ovation in Sarasota. These three are autographs, which are very cool if you look at the design. Um, it's a soft brand with Marriott, so you have a lot more opportunity to change and do what you want. It's not as structured as a regular Marriott full service. Excuse me. I'm going to ask you this. What actually you're offering? Are you offering uh, landlords or tenants or services to people? No, well, Prime Group does. I'm talking about hotel design, but if you are looking for space, we have retail space and we're looking for tenants. Right. Um, we have a, a space at 721 North Federal Highway, and we have retail space, so we're looking for tenants to do that. We always look for people to partnership and development. So a lot of different things the company does. So they're very diversified. All over Florida, from Sarasota down to Marathon and Daytona. So a lot of apartments and hotels. That's been our big focus those two years. Do you do mixed development now? We do. Um, so probably our biggest mixed development project, well we have two. Um, one we're doing right now, if you know Fort Lauderdale, we're at 721 North Federal Highway. It's across from the Veterans Park. Um, and that's a mixed use. It's called Quantum Village. And what we did is we built retail space, and above the retail, we have a courtyard by Marriott. And then we have a rooftop bar that's run by Prime with a separate elevator. And then we have two residential towers going up, 377 apartments, a parking garage, and a pool at the top. So that's a full mixed use. 
Now we're taking it up a notch because that's not enough for us to do. So the next developments, we're adding assisted living facilities. So we're adding those, and that's going to be under the hotel development. So there's a couple sites that we're looking at now in South Florida where it will actually be commercial building, one or two hotels, apartments, assisted living facilities, and retail. So we're doing total mixed use. Are there many developments like that that incorporate ALS? I don't know. I don't really don't know many. I think we could be one of the first to incorporate it all. Uh, for your hotels, how much acres do you need? Like two acres separated? You know what? It totally depends on which hotel you're building. If you're doing a resort like in Playa Largo, that's a lot of acres that you need. Otherwise, you could do things at a really small spot. Um, we're looking at something in Miami that's teeny. I don't know how they're going to do it. But it's in the back of a commercial area above a parking garage. And assisted living facility, how big would you need? Those were looking to be larger because we really want it to be more like a resort feel. Um, and that's where we see assisted living development going to more resort and active feeling. Um, some things we're doing with our first assisted living, which is actually down at Homestead, where we have three of our hotels, is incorporating outside with inside as far as restaurants. So we're going to have restaurants in the facility so assisted living and independent living can use the restaurants and not have to leave the property. So really incorporating more of the resort area. And modernizing the assisted living. You know, everything's evolving so much. It's the same thing with the assisted living development. Thank you. Good. So you see we have everything from a sleep-in to a resort in Playa Larga that does $44 million a year. So we have a lot of diverse different assets. This shows you a little bit here, and you have to look at our website, um, of our projects. And they're all very unique. When we do hotels, as far as design and autographs, we want them to fit into the local market. We did a hotel in Day Daytona, it's called The Daytona, and we partnership with NASCAR. So we were very lucky that we could use The Daytona. It's across from the Speedway, and that's a mixed-use development that we did the construction, but the retail went back to NASCAR. So we own a Fairfield Inn. An autograph, we did 300,000 square foot of retail. There's a Bass Pro Shop, a PF Chains, and then we built two apartment buildings. They're doing so well, we're adding two more apartment buildings. And then we're going into phase two development in Daytona. And that's going to include a huge water lake feature and sports complex because youth sports is a big avenue right now to drive revenue. So we're doing a huge youth sports complex with NASCAR back there and in more apartments and adding one more hotel. This is a micro question, but how do you project this year the summer's going to go with the fact that the Daytona truck meet will no longer be in Daytona? You know, we're doing very well with Daytona. I have to, you know, knock on wood because events are coming back. Um, and we're right across from the Speedway. This was the, the first year that they sold out for the Daytona 500 so far in advance. They were sold out six weeks before the race, and they haven't done that in a long time. So we're pacing ahead. And then they're doing a lot of other music festivals. They did Rockville. I think it's called Rockville. And they're doing another event. So Daytona is really starting to pick up and maintain. That's good. So uh, I think the one they have in the summer, in June, mm -hmm. Daytona trucking, that's not going to affect you guys. No. No, it won't. I think that they have bad press, I think, for that event. And then some of the... Daytona downtown didn't want it, so it was sort of like a tough, even yes. though it wasn't a big issue, but bike week and everything else, we're pacing very well in Daytona, which is good. Um, so again, that's an, another idea for, you know, how do we draw business and looking at development, and that's where we thought of having a youth sports complex. There's one outside of Sarasota, I should know the name of it, it's very famous, where people go on train, um, and we do a lot of business with that property. Oh, St. Harvard Circle? Hmm? St. Armand Circle? Um, Circle? It's near that, but it's something Academy. IH Academy? I can't remember. It's Sports Academy. Um, but we're trying to do something like that when we have these sports. But each hotel we try and do very unique. So our hotel in Daytona is called The Daytona. And the whole theme is race cars, um, but not tacky. You know, my Boston watching flags everywhere. You know, it's having classy design that's subtle, and you don't see it right away. Um, there's things that even in the room, we have the, um, the desk table that pulls out. It's the shape of the racetrack of the Daytona 500. And people wouldn't know that 
if you saw it. And you know, the, the lights are headlights of a car next to the bed. So there's a lot of different sound things that we have. Um, we have actual cars in the lobby. It's very cool. We usually have the Daytona winning car in the lobby. Um, we have an elevator outside that brings race cars in and out. So we can bring cars in and out. So it's all about racing um, and very classy and moonshine because Daytona started with moonshine. Um, so starting with everything's around moonshine in the bar and the recipes and everything are focused on moonshine. So that's one hotel. And then we have a hotel in Sarasota called Art Ovation. And that's all an art concept. And that's because of the Ringling School. We partnership with the Ringling School up there and it's um, all art. And we change the art out twice a year. And we have probably about two to three million dollars worth of art in the hotel. Um, and that will. So that gives you a little idea of the trends in design. I think the brands are getting a lot looser. I think 20 years ago, you were a Marriott. This was your carpet. That's your chair. Mm -hmm. You had to like, they wanted you to look the same here as Cleveland or San Francisco. I think they're learning that's not what people want when they travel. They want to feel regional and experience the local. So they're really being more flexible, much more than they used to. And I think they're seeing that because people are developing software. You know, if I was going to build a Hilton or a Curio or a Marriott and an autograph, I'd much rather do the autograph because you're appealing to the same customer or more, but you have a lot more leeway as far as your design and the service that you offer. And it's more fun. Than so trends in hospitality. Um, I was thinking some of the biggest trends are the unexpected exterior enhancements because everybody wants to be outside and brand direction, sort of the directions of what the brands are doing. Um, so I put in here some real concepts. So I thought, okay, maybe I'll show you some real concepts of what we're working on. Playa Largo Resort is our resort in Key Largo that we have. It was actually the first new resort to be built in the Keys in 25 years. Because the Keys, you can't build new hotels. You have to have something called the TPR. Um, and if you buy a motel for 50 rooms and another motel, you can take those TBRs and use those to build a hotel, but you can't just build a hotel in the Keys. And that's because of the evacuation route, and there's not, they need to have traffic going in and out. So the best thing about the Keys is you will never, if there's 22,000 rooms in the Keys, there'll never be more than 22,000 rooms in the Keys 50 years from now. So that's an amazing investment because demand's going up and you can't add more hotels. So what my boss did is he bought a bunch of small and operating hotels, took those and built the first new resort in a long time there. Um, building in the Keys is very challenging and slow. It's not the easiest thing to do. I wouldn't recommend it for the first one, but um, it came out beautiful. So what we've learned too is after we build a resort or a hotel, things evolve after two years. And you're open, you're like, hmm, maybe I need to do this. Or you look at spaces that weren't used. So to go through some new design concepts I put in here, we're actually working right now on several projects for Playa Largo. Um, so after we open, we look at the space and say, okay, what do we want to redesign or what are some trends? The first slide here is we came up with an idea, I feel like 10 years ago, but it was two years ago, pre-COVID. So we're just now getting permitting for it. But this was a space in the hotel that was back of house and sales. And we thought, you know what we're missing? We're missing a Starbucks, a candy store, an ice cream for a resort. So what we did is we looked at the space, how we could convert it to a Starbucks that we could operate, and then started looking at design. And then whenever we look at a space, we do something called a pro forma to see what the return is. So we did a pro forma on this, and we could do about 800000 a year running a Starbucks candy shop with an investment of about that's an easy one. Now, so this is a big project that we're starting to work on. These show you some of the design concepts. So what we'll do is we'll, we have internal design team, and we're actually looking to hire some designers. So I hard to you guys know anybody. But we work with other designers that give us the presentations, and we go through, and we check what do we like, what do we not like, what are some of the trends that we're seeing. So there's two concepts here that they presented to us. We like the second concept a little bit more. So if you can look here, it's, um, it's more residential feel for the Starbucks and adding the candy shop with it. Um, the next slide here, which is another big trend, this is, says La Marea. 
We have a restaurant that serves breakfast in our resort, but it's very difficult to capture people for dinner because people typically don't want to eat dinner when they eat breakfast, is what we're learning. They want to go somewhere else. So cooking kitchens and cooking classes and demonstration kitchens are a big trend right now. So this is what we're doing with our La Marea. So it's going to be a buffet, like a mercata, Italian, with a big fire and cooking the bread in the morning. But then in the afternoon, we can do cooking demonstration classes. We can do group breakouts. And it makes the space active where it's not sitting dormant and boring for the day. OK? Then the next concept we're working on is outdoor space. Yes, this outdoor space, so we know right now everybody wants to be outside, and resorts are doing very well in Florida. One area that's even doing better in the resorts are cabana rentals. The revenue that we're getting on cabana rentals is unbelievable. So we're renovating them and adding more cabanas wherever we can. Um, so this is just showing you some of the things we're looking to do to the exterior. We're looking to add some unexpected swinging chairs in a restaurant. We want to upgrade our cabanas where people, you want fans or air conditioning. We could be cool because it is so hot here in the summertime. Um, fire pits and things like that with the cabanas. Some of the other resorts we have, we just bought a hotel in Marathon. We're looking to do two-story cabanas. Um, that's a big trend now. So you can rent both stories and then have them go around, which is interesting. This is just design of um, a terrace, which is off of the lobby. And some of the trends here with the fabrics. See there. Um, the other thing we're looking to do for outdoor spaces, if you look around the pool, um, day beds are also a revenue stream. Um, so we're looking to get day beds. You can rent those out now or do food and beverage minimums. They're very popular. And then, of course, the other one is the Instagrammable item. Everybody needs an Instagrammable thing so people take pictures. So we're always looking at unique furniture. This is some furniture we have that is unique here, but we want to add some more Instagrammable, unique items throughout the resort so people can take pictures. Um, question, what you mentioned about um, two-story cabana. Mm -hmm. So uh, when I was at, um, I forget it was in Sarasota, but I was surprised I saw two-story restaurants. Is mm -hmm. that something that is kind of like trending now because of the spacing? And it is and with views, so we're actually looking to do that. So the hotel that we just bought in Marathon was a higher place and then independent for a year, and they have a restaurant called the Lighthouse Restaurant in the Marina, right in Marathon, and it has a great bar overlooking the marina, but it's the same level as the marina. So what we're going to do is add a second bar on the rooftop and do a second level, so you'll be able to go up the steps on either side, and then you can actually see the marina and the boats instead of being right at the same level with them. And then we'll have the restaurant on the rooftop and then the cabanas will go off of that. So then on either side of the restaurant, we'll probably have three or four cabanas on each side that'll be on that story or you can access them down below. And your restaurants are your own concept or you bring in other like chain restaurants? We do, it's all different. It depends on the market and the space Thank and you. what we're thinking is gonna work. Thank you. Yeah. So those are our Instagrammable pictures there. Um, some other concepts. This is showing you a little bit about the design of cabanas. Right now you really want it to function for four to six people. You want it covered, lighting. It's almost like a room with a refrigerator. Um, and then we have the day beds, which are popular. So you have some indoor space, and then you have the outdoor space in front of it, which is popular. Here we have some other concepts here give you an idea. Um, and then the other big trend is unexpected. So our restaurant, you know, even working with the brands, you want to have swings in the restaurant and things that people don't expect. Even in meeting space, you know, we were touring with some people with Hilton. We built the Hilton and Aventura that opened last March. Um, and we were touring with that design team. And they even want meeting space to not look like meeting space. They want it to look soft seating with swings and playful and nooks and really change the whole look. So I think the future of the meeting space is really going to totally change as well. I have a question. Yeah. When you're um, doing trends in hospitality, how often do you need to reevaluate your assets to see when you need to update them? 
I would say we do it sooner than most. Um, so if you look at the brand, the brand has you do an update every seven years. So every seven years is a soft renovation, and that means carpet, wallpaper, paint, and fabric, but everything else, the furniture stays. Then every 14 years, the brand has you do a hard renovation, and that's typically the bathroom and the casement. So that's a lot more money. We look at things every two years. So we put together 12-year CapEx plans just so we know, you know the CapEx where we're going to hit our big renovations. But if we see an opportunity, and that's what's great, I think, about the employer assets are doing well, but with a private company, if we see an opportunity to make money utilizing the space differently, we'll spend the money. Um, perfect example is adding the Starbucks. You know, that's not due. We don't need a renovation, but we're going to spend $750,000. We're going to spend a million and a half at the pool. They have great big advantage. We don't have to do that for the brand, but we see a revenue opportunity by doing that. Um, another example is our innovation hotel that we have. The restaurant has never done well. I think it's hard to have a restaurant in a hotel. I think the other thing that we've learned as a company is you don't hire a hotel designer to design a restaurant. So we need to hire restaurant designers to design a restaurant. So we're learning that. Unfortunately, when we built this hotel that opened four years ago, the restaurant looks like the hotel, and that's not what you want. That's not the trend. So now we're looking at the space. What do we do with this big restaurant? How do we maximize the revenue? So we actually had a consultant come in, and he looked at the space, and he said, we'll make it a ballroom. So the restaurant, we're going to make a junior ballroom. We have a lobby bar, and we're going to make that the restaurant. So we're going to just tear that outside. So by changing the space, we're going to make two and a half million in a restaurant that's doing eight hundred thousand. Activate the lobby, do a little bit of renovation, and add about a million and two in food and beverage revenue there. So just by that one change, we could do three and a half million more a year. By again looking at the space. The other thing we're going to do, this is my boss's idea, not the the um, consultant we hired, is speakeasies are very popular right now. So we have a gift shop that has art and things in the hotel. <coughs> We're going to do a speakeasy through that. So we're going to have like a little hidden door. We have to go to the sales department. Don't worry about that. And go into the sales department, and we're going to have a speakeasy with about 25 to 30 seats. And again, that's generating revenue. Right? So like that's something cool and trendy. You can probably generate 400000 Just operate at night, and the gift shop store person will let you in there. Would you be interested in taking over or leasing the you know, I think typically we like to own and not lease. I might know people that are looking to do that because spas are actually doing very well right now. Yes. Um, it's a good market. We're doing in our resort, the spa revenue is up. So I might know people, um, but we typically own and then we have a management company manage and we oversee some food and beverage. Maybe you could take over the lease and then. Maybe we can look at it. I can give you my card and I can get your card. Because we're always looking at that and opportunity. But I think the biggest thing is exactly what you're saying. If you can go in with a, a clean slate and look at the space and what is the best space. You know, sometimes it's good having somebody come in because the staff is emotional. You know, food and beverage people, I love them. But they're like, no, you can't change my restaurant. Or, no, you don't want to take this away, but you have to look at what's the best use of the space. And do you lease the restaurant? You know, we looked at that. Maybe it shouldn't be a hotel restaurant. Maybe we partnership. You know, we still own the building, but running, running a hotel restaurant is a challenge from day one. And you need to give them a reason to come in. And maybe having a huge restaurant at that location is not the best spot, but you're doing well in catering, and that's why the lobby bar is busy. Just Maximize those spaces and don't try and be a, a fine dining restaurant in Sarasota where there's a lot of competition. For you, does it make your job more interesting and exciting to work for a private group where they're so quick to react to um, to the market? Yes, it's nice. It's nice because they have money. I've worked for <laughs> I worked for Marriott and then I worked for a group called Thayer Lodging. I worked for Blackstone and Hilton. So I worked with a lot of different groups. And then I had my own company for about two years, right when the stock market crashed, which was very stressful because it was my money. So it's a lot easier with someone else's money. But it's also it's easy because they do have the money, and they're long-term holders. 
So having their own construction company, we tend to overbuild, so they build things right. Everything is concrete form. Everything is very high end. I know Warren's been at some of our hotels. We custom everything. Even our residents in our Fairfield Inns are custom. So we're long-term holders. I'd say probably half of the companies buy and sell. They have investment groups come in. They, they invest money. They want to return in seven years, so they flip it. We're not a, you know, we're a family-run company. They want to keep the assets. I tell them he overspends, he buys carpet, then I want to change in seven years, and it's never going to wear out. I'm like, don't buy that good a carpet, because I don't have to change it anyways with the brand with the brand specs. So, yes, it's much easier to be with a company that has the money to do things and change. The courtyard we built in Fort Lauderdale um, had a fitness center on the rooftop, and we were walking probably six months before opening, and my boss said, well, should we do a rooftop bar? And I said, yeah, we should do really makes sense. They're popular right now. A lot of people can't create it. The pool's up here for the fitness center. So we could do that. If we weren't the owner of construction company, then we had to take all the concrete down. Like they had already put the concrete up. We had to take it down and put the clear on, um, add an elevator. So we, we had to do a lot of investment to get that to happen. But because they are the construction company, we had the flexibility, which is great. When you mentioned the speakeasy, so does that count like as a restaurant, or how does that count with under like you know for zoning or parking? And yeah, it counts as a restaurant okay. and the same liquor license. Okay. Yeah. Just out of curiosity, you had the uh, Starbucks, and I, I realize this may be still conceptual at this point, but it was in the Keys, correct? Yes. Did you get a lot of resistance from the neighbors because uh, of bringing in like a name brand into that market? Like, were they a little bit more protective of? But the local, well, I have a couple stories that's not on Starbucks. So we're going to run this one so it be proudly through. So it looks like Starbucks, and we can do everything but have that email, whatever. <laughs> and then we run it. So we're doing be proudly through inside the resort. So really, we're just going to capture people in the resort. But we tried to open a Starbucks in Marathon in front of our courtyard. We have retail, we have extra space for retail. We couldn't put a Starbucks in because you couldn't turn left without a light. Traffic. So it's very difficult. So they next our Starbucks there. Then up in Daytona, um, where we have one Daytona below our autograph hotel, I wanted to put a Starbucks. But it was funny, the, the retail people wanted local. So it, there is a constant struggle. Who do you bring in? How do you find the mix? And what is the best fit? And they're pretty strict. They need certain drive through and other things. But the wheat proudly grew. Works great inside the resort. And then we have them doing the aperture in our home. Good. So, this is the restaurant, just some concepts there. Um, then, another project we're working on that I included here is it's our courtyard by Marriott and Marathon. So, this is a courtyard, but we added an extra tower. So, it's really it's a courtyard that gets resort rates. Even when I started the company, I'm like, to me, mentally, you're only going to pay so much for a courtyard. This hotel, we do get $399 to $450 a rate um, because we have two pools. It's on the water. So we're even looking now, working with Marriott. Again, this is going towards their flexibility. I think they're seeing the soft brands are popular. They're going to let us change the name. We think the Blue Waters Resort by a courtyard by Marriott brand. So they're going to let us call it the resort and then put a courtyard down below. It would be great. Then you get the best of both worlds. Um, you so, do anything with that little lagoon in there and like the little rock and everything? At the courtyard? Yeah, the, the blue one. I was down there like two weeks ago. Oh, that's too funny. We're doing a ton there, so you get to see all the plants. We're spending about a million and a half. Sweet. So we're fixing the, the wall going out, and we're going to have a fire pit. So. I saw the one in the water that was there. Yes, so we're redoing that, but there's a walkway that's all falling apart. And that's where we bought the hotel next door. Yeah, okay. And we just closed on that February 14th. So we're going to fix that whole wall, um, or that, you know, the sea wall mm -hmm. with sand. We're going to have a fire pit at the end. We're going to have lights going all the way down from the bar, all the way down to the water. We're redoing all of the furniture there. Again, we opened it as a courtyard, and now we're really getting resort people. We want to make it more of a restaurant. You can even see some of the design. The first
first one is just the bistro. We're changing the bistro so that it can be more active at night. Mm -hmm. Because when it rains, I think people want to go to a bar and somewhere to hang out. Now it looks like a bistro. So we're changing that design. But if you look at the outdoor space, we're totally changing that by changing all the furniture to be the restaurant feel, adding the lighting, and we're going to add cabanas. Um, and then we have a beach at this resort, but they're separated. There's a big landscape. People don't even know we have the beach. So we're opening up the space from the pool to the beach so that you can use both areas. And then the plan is, with the Far Blanco Resort we just bought, we're going to make it one huge complex. So we're going to have a road going between the two, and then probably have that be a Hilton brand and keep this a Marriott because then you have those reservation systems. So you have the best of both. And it will be Blue Water <coughs> compound with a courtyard and a curio or whatever we decide to do on the other side. Yeah, we have a ton plan for that, which I can't wait. The only problem right now is I've been waiting about nine months for day beds that were supposed to be delivered a long time ago for my rooftop. So the supply chain is about <coughs> a year if you're lucky to get it. So here are some of the design concepts for the inside space. If you look at this page, this will show you exactly what we're doing for the outside. Um, and this is the actual rendering. So we're going to redo lighting and add a fire pit with chairs. We're adding four cabanas here. We're going to add more of a beach here. Um, we've talked about adding a water park. I know you can see the floaties by Bass Pro Shop the kids' water park area, and there's certain floaties. We think we're going to add those on the other side. And then after four years, we finally got permitting to build a <coughs> marina. So where we did that addition, um, we're adding a marina in that area. We'll activate that as well. So again, the trends here is really outdoor dining, where originally it was just a pool bar. We're going to really make it a restaurant, and we're going to add a stage, because down in the Keys, live music is everything. We need live music every night of the week. So we'll have a little stage and make this much more of a lounge area for food and the cabanas. There. And then you can see some of the design trends with the furniture. There, and again, a lot of it's about the fire pits. And then you can see there's some unique sunshades and again, things that are hanging, a lot of swings color, and then different sunscreen, and then lighting is very popular. What else? That's the big project we're working on right now. They are pretty cool. It's fun because we, we do go in and change things after we've operated for a couple of years. And it's nice being a soft brand. You know, my favorite brands are Autograph and Curio because you do have the flexibility to do a lot. But the brands are getting much more flexible. The Hilton and Aventura, um, we really pushed Hilton. They wanted us to do everything the Hilton way, and that hotel looks more like a Conrad or an international Hilton. We, we looked at um, Buenos Aires Hilton and a lot of Hiltons in South America that are beautiful and cutting edge in design, and actually that's the one of these pictures, I think. And we really pushed, that's this one here, just the bar. So we really pushed the envelope with that design, and they went with us, which was really great, and now they're sort of using us as the flagship for ownership to come and renovate to really make it more high-end, leisure-driven, and not just big corporate open boxes and corporate items.
additional eight. So eventually we're going to have 24 $2 million homes. They're three and four bedroom. And we rent those out for 2009. Are you trying to buy more right building? Yes, whenever there's TBRs, we're looking at that. And then we're actually got approved to build affordable housing in Marathon. And that's about half a mile before the courtyard. If you know the courtyard marathon, yeah, yeah. it's going down to that. We're starting an affordable housing project there. That's better. My buddy's selling the project or the property right for the seven mile bridge, and they have seven, I think seven or nine units that come with it. So I'll share the information yeah. with you. Definitely. We're always, because we're in that market, right. that's why buying far blind was unusual for us. We usually do new construction. Right. But if it makes sense and we're in that market, we have the hotel next door and we can have the synergy, we're always open to looking. So are you, right now, in your opinion, at least industry-wise, better than before the pandemic? We're still not there. Hotel. Much better than before the pandemic. Well, much better. So I think, you know, we're unique because our hotels are anywhere from 100 to 250 rooms. So we're smaller hotels. We're in leisure markets. Um, some of our markets before the pandemic were suffering Sarasota. Everybody decided to build at the same time in Sarasota. And then with Starwood and Marriott merging, there was way too much oversupply in that area. So we were doing horrible. That market is unbelievable right now in Sarasota. Um, but we are doing much better than before the pandemic. And I think it's because you're all, you know, we're all leisure and transient. I, I keep telling my boss, I pushed everyone for the budget, so we're going to kill it this year. We're going to stabilize next year. You can't keep pushing the rates because as your mix of business goes 20 30 percent group, your rates are going to go down and you don't have a leisure. But Florida's, we're doing amazing. So we're very fortunate to be in this market. Mm -hmm. you say that again. I know. I thank the Florida gods every day driving away. <laughs> you know, we're very lucky to be in Florida. So it is. It's a good market, it's very strong. Yes. Inters what I'll do is I'll give you my card, and we're actually meeting with FIU next week to tour, I'm not sure which campus, to put together the internship program. So what I can do is give you my card, and if you're interested, you have to be a junior or a senior. Good. So we're looking for juniors or seniors, and we're looking to bring in tenants. And we really want people that are interested in real estate, as well as the construction, you can do the whole performa and analysis because we have projects all the time we're looking at and you might close on one out of ten, typically. Right now we're doing a huge project in Ocala where we bought 800 acres. Um, it is. Hollywood, Florida is where our corporate office is. The interns, I think we're looking at doing three internships. One that's construction, one's that, one that's architect and real estate, and one that's hotel. So three different. Interesting. It is, and then it's sort of, you know, we're thinking we're going to meet with them next week. You know, we're going to do one person and expose you to all of this, which might be interesting, because you might not know about development or doing the pro formas or residents. It's sort of you want to try all the different areas to see what you're interested in. I know I did that with hotels. You know, I worked at all the different departments when I was in college. I knew I didn't want to be in food and beverage. <laughs> but then, I'd much rather be in sales and operations. Across the street, all my housekeeping. Exactly. <laughs> Actually, it's funny. I didn't mind housekeeping. After being at the desk for so long, I'm like, this is really nice. You don't have to talk to anybody. You can be a man. It's sort of nice. Good. Well, thank you. I've got my card for you thank all. You. If you're thank in you. Thank you. Thank you.